Should you follow a reverse diet or a recovery diet after your fat loss phase is finished? Today, I'm gonna to teach you exactly how fast you should increase your calories after your diet is done. First and foremost, I appreciate you being here. And before we get into the video, I wanna make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe if you have not yet so you can get notified every time we drop a new video. And make sure you drop a comment if there's anything I can do to help you personally. Let's get into the video. The question I'm going to answer for you today is whether or not you should follow a recovery diet or a reverse diet. If you don't know what a recovery diet is, it is a fast reverse diet. Whereas a reverse diet is a slow progression of calories over time. If you are unfamiliar with either of these, I highly suggest you click on some of the links in the description of this video because we have multiple articles for free on our website detailing out exactly what reverse dieting is and how to follow a reverse diet. And we have two different videos on reverse dieting by itself that are extremely popular and super helpful. But today I'm going to compare the two approaches because there is a debate of whether or not we should go aggressive with our calorie increases post diet, which would be a recovery diet, or if we should go more conservative with our increases of our calories, which would be a reverse diet. So first and foremost, what do we know about either of these strategies from a scientific literature perspective? There is nothing on either of them. The truth is there's no science. There's no studies on reverse dieting at all that we know of. I think they are in the works of actually designing one right now, which means who knows when it will get published because it takes years of time to actually finish and publish a study. However, what we do have is a lot of research on diet breaks, metabolic adaptation, and fat loss in general, as well as calorie overfeeding, which is the act of going into a surplus intentionally and just seeing what our body does physiologically speaking. And because we have a lot of information from the studies on dieting, starvation, overfeeding, metabolic adaptation, and diet breaks, we can theorize a lot and we can actually coach practically on reverse dieting or a recovery diet because we have so much information on these other topics that are very closely related from a metabolic perspective. And we have tons of anecdote. I have taken hundreds of clients through reverse diets and there's many other coaches in the industry who have as well. So we have plenty of info to create a good hypothesis. A reverse diet, again, is where we go slow. So the reason we would go slow with a reverse diet is to sustain the leanness that we achieve. That is the whole purpose of a reverse diet. A reverse diet was created as a way to accomplish your fat loss goal and then slowly increase increase your calories over time, which I'm going to detail out how to do depending on who you are at the end of this video. But you would do this over time slowly in order to maintain the new body fat level that you achieved. So if you dropped 30 pounds, you want to maintain that 30 pound weight loss. However, you might not want to be doing tons of cardio or be in a chronic low diet because you're hungry and you have low energy and you don't want to do cardio. So what do you do? You reverse diet and cardio, meaning you decrease the cardio until it's gone and you increase the calories until you're at a new maintenance. Again, I will describe how this looks for you specifically. A recovery diet is when the diet fatigue was so overwhelming that you are in an unhealthy place and you may need to aggressively increase your calories immediately post diet so that you can restore biofeedback and hormonal balance. And this really only happens when we diet to a level so lean that we create an unhealthy homeostasis or physique. There's very few people who actually take it to this level and need the recovery diet. And that's what I want to break down and explain today because it can be very confusing and people get afraid to stay lean or to reverse diet slowly, fearing that it's an unhealthy route or that their hormones are gonna be screwed in the long run when that may not actually be the case. All right, now let's run through just a bullet checklist of why anybody would do a reverse or recovery diet. Overall, this entire theory of reversing your calories, because even a recovery diet is technically still a reverse diet. You are reversing your caloric intake away from the deficit that you were in to a new maintenance. But what is the point of this? Number one is to simply increase calories so you have more food. Number two is to sustain a level of body fat that is lower now that you have achieved that. So it's really just sustaining the result you achieve. Number three is to improve performance in the gym. As we know, as we diet and have lower calorie intake, we are going to also have a lower performance in the gym. We don't have as much energy or fuel to recover from the training we're doing. Number four is going to be to increase muscle tissue, potentially. We know that muscle tissue is 60 to 65% water. So even if we're not building new muscle tissue, we will at the bare minimum replenish muscle tissue that may have been depleted or regain muscle tissue that may have started to atrophy from the diet itself. Number five is to improve physiological aspects of bio 
biofeedback and hormonal balance. And last but not least, it is the psychology of dieting. So as we get diet fatigue and we go through a diet for longer, the psychological stress increases and our food focus gets worse, which we don't want to have because if you're constantly food focused, just not a good healthy place to be in. So we want to reverse that as well. How do we accomplish these things? These all sound amazing and we have to do something. We have to act upon the recovery or the reverse diet to actually cause these positive symptoms to happen or these negative symptoms to be reversed, right? So this first step is to increase your calories, obviously. And when we increase our calories, a lot of the temporary symptoms that happen from dieting diminish. So for example, when we go into a diet, almost immediately, we are going to see an increase in cortisol, which is the stress hormone. We're gonna see a decrease in testosterone and thyroid output, testosterone mainly for men, thyroid for all of the above. But the point is, is that we are going to start seeing declines in some of these hormones almost immediately. We're also going to see a decline in metabolic hormones that are going to negatively impact our metabolism. That's what metabolic adaptation is. Our metabolism slowly declines as the diet progresses. This isn't a negative thing. It's because we have less total body mass and because we have less calories coming in. However, one way that we can almost immediately replenish some of these hormones is to increase our caloric intake. So even temporarily, you will see an improvement in these things when you start to increase your calories. Second is carbohydrate intake increases. Now, people argue that fats need to be increased as well. I typically don't recommend my clients bring their fats lower than what is physiologically acceptable for hormonal health, which is gonna be a bare minimum of 0.5 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is very low, but that is the lowest you will ever take it. And I usually don't even go that low. So typically when we are reversing or doing a recovery diet, we should mainly be focusing on carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are also going to be more effective on our total daily energy expenditure, as well as replenishing muscle tissue, having energy in the gym, blunting the cortisol response from dieting, which is gonna help alleviate stress, so on and so forth. So carbohydrates are a big focus of increasing in the reverse or recovery diet process. And then last but not least, body fat increases. So in some situations, it's not just calories that are causing these negative biofeedback biomarkers or hormonal declines, but it's actually the amount of body fat stored on your body, which is one of the reasons why you would go a little bit faster. If you need to actually add some body fat to your body to help fix some of these health markers that have declined during the diet. And I will say this is more rare than people like to believe because quite simply, when we look at the research done on REDS, for example, relative energy deficit syndrome or the female triad where women lose their menstrual cycle or competitive bodybuilders who have a serious decline in these hormones, all of them are abnormally lean. I mean, bodybuilders specifically compete to be as lean as humanly possible. So for us to compare what our diet should be like to somebody or our hormonal profile should be like to somebody who is stepping on stage, competing at being the lowest body fat level, that's how he gets a trophy, that's how he, she wins. I think it's unrealistic to say, so obviously that's gonna be a different scenario, but it is important to point out that when body fat levels do get too low, hormonal balance also declines even more so than from the temporary caloric reductions that we see decreasing hormones as well. Speaking of low body fat levels, that is the biggest argument people have against reverse dieting, which is the next thing I wanna to try to tackle in this video. Most people who are proponents of the recovery diet, and, in, and I'm not saying this as I'm not a proponent of it, because I do think there is a lot of applications for that, but the people who are the biggest proponents of it are also the people who are coaching or studying physique competitors. So when we consider recovery diet, it is important to understand that the main application of a recovery diet is for physique competitors, or any individual who takes it that far and gets that lean, which is rare. When I think of a fat loss client, who wants to achieve a six pack and sustain a six pack, they are not getting bodybuilding lean. They wanna wake up and see their abs in the morning. They don't wanna have literally the thinnest skin you could possibly have and see every single ounce of muscle and bone on their body. But that's what bodybuilding is. I've done a physique show and that's the level of leanness I took it to. I was not going to try to sustain that level of leanness because it's unrealistic and I needed body fat back on my body, not a lot, but some, in order to restore hormonal balance. And hormonal balance based on body fat levels is a little bit of a double-edged sword or a bell curve. If you are too overweight or if you are storing too much body fat, you will have very poor hormonal health. On the contrary, if you are too lean, you will also have poor hormonal health, which is why there is a zone in the middle. And I'm gonna touch on what that zone is here shortly. But the big key is that understanding the recovery diet should be reserved for people who are competing in physique sport or they're taking it to a level that they're getting as lean as a bikini figure or bodybuilding competitor. That is a very, very, very key point. Now, there are certain situations where 
where individuals cannot sustain a lower level of body fat that is usually acceptable for most human physiology. And what I mean by that is, for example, I can sustain a six pack and stay healthy. I can't be absolutely shredded and stay healthy. However, there are some men who maybe cannot get as lean as me and sustain it. And I also know plenty of guys who can get leaner than me and sustain it and be just as healthy as I am. But if I get too lean or as lean as they do, I would not. This is why hormonal balance is very relative to the individual. And this is most commonly seen with women in my experience. There's no research on that, but anecdotally speaking, based on my coaching experience and my entire staff's coaching experience, this is more common with women. We have some women who will lose their menstrual cycle far sooner than other women, sooner than we would expect. And there's some women who we can take it so far and they never lose their hormonal cycle and we're shocked. I've had some women getting prepared for a photo shoot and getting extremely lean and get pregnant, literally get pregnant in the process, which I would not expect because they were pushing the boundaries of how lean they could get. However, their physiological makeup is just advantageous in that sense. They're, they can take it that far and not sacrifice their health, but not everybody's the same. So I don't want to say that only physique competitors need to do a recovery diet as a blanket statement, but most of the time that is who it should be reserved for. And we should be reserving the recovery diet for those who get so lean that physiological health declines because of their body fat levels, not because of their caloric intake. Now to answer the burning question of the video, should you be following a recovery diet, which is a fast, more aggressive and immediate reverse diet process after you finish your fat loss phase, or should you follow a reverse diet, the classic style of slowly increasing your calories over time to try to sustain the new result you achieved. Let's start with the recovery diet. Number one, you should follow a recovery diet if you had just competed in a physique competition and or you are entering into your off season or improvement season. And the reason for this is because if you just stepped on stage, you probably fall into the category that you are so lean, your body fat levels are so low that it is unhealthy. You're on the other end of the spectrum. You're not overweight and unhealthy because of it. You are so lean that your hormones are probably taking a hit. And we have plenty of anecdotal research with physique coaches that have slowly reverse dieted their clients after a show. And I've watched this happen through colleagues. They go so slow that the physique competitor stays absolutely shredded and gets their calories up super high. I mean, adding one, 2000 calories post show yet still feels like shit and their blood work still shows they feel like shit. So the point is, is that if we increase too slow, our total daily energy expenditure, our metabolic metric that we can really track with this stuff is going to slowly increase with it. You are adapting with that reverse diet too well and your hormones don't actually get a chance to improve or get fixed after the show because your body fat levels are so low. So if you're a competitor, you should probably do a recovery diet. You should go faster. And I'm gonna show you how fast you should go here in a sec. You should go faster to improve your health first. And then you can slowly do it later on just to kind of not get too fat post-show, but immediately post-show, you should probably do it. And if you have an improvement season, meaning you just competed, maybe you feel fine, but you want to put on some muscle. You don't have time to waste. You have another season coming up. You need to get out of the diet, reverse diet quickly, get to surplus, start building muscle because before you know it, you're going to be prepping for your show next year as well. And that's how a season to season bodybuilder competitor works. You should also follow a recovery diet if you got near stage ready but maybe you didn't step on stage so maybe you did a photo shoot you did something where you pushed it really far you just got super disciplined and wanted to see how far you can take it just to check it off the bucket list great i would say this is anybody who gets sub seven to eight percent if you're a male and sub 14 percent 13 14 percent if you're a female this is very average and it's all relative so some men can sustain a six pack and feel amazing at seven to eight percent some men see their six pack at 11 percent some feel like shit at 10 percent some feel like shit not until they get to 6%. But on average, I would say the average numbers are about 8% body fat and 14% body fat, men and women. If you take it that far and you're still a gen pop, you're not competing, but you get that lean, you should also consider a recovery diet and going a little bit faster to restore that health before taking it slow. The next reason you should follow a recovery diet is if your biofeedback is really poor. So maybe you didn't step on stage. Maybe you didn't get that lean. Maybe you didn't even go do a DEXA or track your body fat percentage, usually, which is pretty inaccurate anyway, but you know your biofeedback is that you are missing your menstrual cycle if you're a female you have no sex drive if you're a male or a female you have brain fog you're very irritable with your family with your colleagues you are forgetting things easily your memory's bad you just can't train hard like these are all signs of a diet right we all know the diet fatigue signs cravings food focus hunger stress cortisol up irritability all these things track those things and as you go through the diet if they're at an all-time high you need to recover diet however i would also say try 
try implementing a refeed throughout your diet to see if it replenishes some of those biofeedback markers. If you do a two to three day refeed and you instantly see improvements in your sex drive, in your focus, in your energy, in your sleep, in your stress, then maybe you don't need an aggressive recovery diet. You just needed a refeed and you can rest assured that it's just calorie related, not body fat related, and you can go a little bit slower. The last caveat with the recovery diet is that you need to make sure that you are not mistaking any of these negative biofeedback signals with poor hormonal health if they are just diet fatigue. As I mentioned, a lot of the same exact negative symptoms can happen from low body fat levels and from a caloric reduction. A caloric reduction is required in order for you to lose body fat levels and get to your goal physique. So if you were chasing your goal physique and you notice that you're a little bit lethargic, you have low energy, you have bad sleep, so on and so forth, that's just part of the game and you're gonna experience that. However, you should see a reverse in it if you take a multi-day refeed. And if you do, then you know it's calorie related. If you don't, try again to take a longer refeed, maybe take a full week. And if you still don't, then you need a recovery diet. But I wanna make sure that caveat is very clear because a lot of people feel these symptoms during a diet and they think they are in a very unhealthy place. But the reality is, is that you are just in a calorie deficit and it is absolutely normal. It is part of it. And if you are in pursuit of chasing a healthier body fat level and a healthier mindset from being in a leaner physique, then I would say those negative symptoms are justified for the greater good. And you should stick through it and maybe just implement a refeed to help you alleviate some of those symptoms and then take a slower process of reverse dieting, which is what we're gonna get into next. This one is much easier. You should follow a reverse diet. Number one, if you are not a competitor, if you are a gen pop individual, and although some of you watching this might see me and think that I am not a gen pop because I have been coaching for almost 12 years, I am very serious about all this. I am, I don't compete in anything. I just train because I love training. I wanna be a jacked dad. So I am very much gen pop and I will still reverse diet because I have no reason to get so lean to get on stage. So I'm a great example of needing a reverse diet. And if you are somebody like myself or otherwise who is not competing, but wants to diet for fat loss after your diet, you should reverse diet, not recovery diet, as long as any of those symptoms that I explained in the recovery diet are not affecting you at such a great level. Number two, you can return some of those negative biofeedback symptoms to a positive level by simply refeeding, as I mentioned before. And number three, this will not negatively impact psychological stress or lifestyle. What I mean by that is if you go slowly with the reverse, it's not gonna cause any stress at home, it's not gonna be a burden on your spouse, it's not gonna cause any psychological issues with food. If you can successfully complete a slow reverse diet to sustain a lean physique and physiological health without sacrificing psychological health and lifestyle, then I think you are a perfect candidate for a reverse diet. How to recovery diet and reverse diet is what we are gonna talk about next. So the first thing we are gonna show you is how to recover, uh, do a recovery diet as a gen pop individual. So let's say I did take it to a place where I feel like shit and I know it's tied to my body fat levels because I tested it via taking a multi-day repeat or diet break, nothing improved, my biofeedback still sucked and I needed to do a recovery diet. As you will see here, the first step is an immediate increase of calories over the first month or two. We really wanna take an aggressive approach with this and essentially jump our calories up to our new predicted maintenance. For example, if my old maintenance was 2,500 calories, I dieted down to 1,500 calories and I do an equation online to figure out that my new predicted maintenance is technically 2,000. We're just gonna make it easy for math. I'm gonna immediately jump up to 2,000 because that's what's gonna instantly restore my health, right? I may put on a little bit of body fat because I may overshoot that maintenance a little bit and my body might not have enough time to catch up to that and increase total daily energy expenditure, but that is the point. We want to aggressively jump up to restore health above all else. After that jump up, you can continue to increase your calories by five to 10% every one to two weeks, every one to three weeks, until you find your new place to sit at, which is usually gonna be at a comfortable maintenance where you have enough flexibility for social eating, you feel good in the gym, and you can sustain a body fat level that you are confident and comfortable with. Now we have recovery diet for an athlete. So this is where we would consider a physique competitor. And the really the only main difference is that they're gonna be playing with a surplus later on. So they're still going to take the exact same aggressive approach right out the gate. And it's actually even more so important because they probably got even leaner than the gen pop client. However, this individual is going to jump up their calories. Then they're going to slow and steadily increase them over time. Like I mentioned in the last slide, but then they are going to play around with more surpluses because they want to build muscle. So they're not going to hang out at maintenance for much. They're going to tiptoe into a surplus. And as you can see, it kind of zigzags a little bit. And that's because finding a surplus and adjusting your surplus is an individual and it's a dynamic thing. 
There's a lot of times where you increase your calories and your body increases its need. So you've got to increase them more then you over increase them. Then you got to bring them back or your training volume increases, or you're not training for a little bit, or it's a deload. And because of that, it is a very dynamic process. But the point is, is a recovery diet for an athlete should be an immediate jump up in calories, a slow and steady increase to find their new maintenance. And then it is an exploration of finding a surplus so that they can continue to gain muscle before they have to prep for the next show. And last but not least, we have the reverse diet, which is reserved just for gen pop. This is a much more conservative approach. And as you can see, we are going to still take an immediate jump at first. So we are going to semi-aggressively increase our calories at the beginning. And we do this because we want to restore most of those negative biofeedback symptoms. And we want to get ourselves to a baseline of hormonal balance. And usually this is going to be anywhere between 10 to 20% of calories, or again, your new predicted maintenance. And what I would say with that is to do the exact same thing. Before you were at 2,500, you finished the diet at 1,500. Your new predicted is 2,000. However, instead of jumping to 2,000, you're going to be conservative and you're going to go to 1,750 or 1,800. You jump about halfway there. And the reason you do that is because you want your body to catch up. You didn't diet for so long or get so lean that if you have a few more weeks in the deficit, it's not the end of the world. This will require some willpower and self-discipline because you feel like you accomplished the diet, you finished it, and now we're telling you you have to stay in a deficit a little bit longer. And that sucks at times. However, if you just dieted for 8, 10, 12, even 16 weeks and you accomplished a really badass physique and you're really proud of it, you want to keep that. So spend a few weeks taking it slow, letting your total daily energy expenditure creep up because your BMR and your knee and all these aspects that are physically burning more calories throughout the day, every day are going to increase as you increase your calories slowly. And you're going to adapt in a positive manner, allowing you to sustain that level of body fat. Once you make that immediate jump about two to three weeks later, you are going to see that you sustained your weight or you might have even dropped a pound because many times when we make that small jump, we move more and that burns calories. However, if you don't immediately increase again, even though you might be excited about the weight loss, that is going to send you back down negatively speaking with your biofeedback. So it's important to make sure you bump your calories calories up again by five to 10%. And you will do that every one or two weeks until you reach your new predicted maintenance. And for some people who are a hyper responder, which means that they have a metabolism that really is adaptive. And as they increase, they keep burning more calories through meat and training and BMR and things like that. They may be able to push the boundary of that new maintenance and creep it up even higher. And the last recommendation I have for any gym pop is to not do this for longer than one to 1.5 times of your diet. If you are still reverse dieting six months later, you probably went a little too slow. So don't take it too slow and make sure at the beginning of the reverse diet, you avoid highly palatable foods. This is a big issue I see with many people. They begin to reverse diet, they increase their calories and they realize they can fit Ben and Jerry's and beer and croissants and things like that into their diet finally. And they want to splurge a little bit, which I understand. And it's healthy to do so in moderation. However, those things are also trigger foods. And oftentimes when we eat a little bit, we just want to say fuck it and eat them all. So in my experience, it really helps to try to focus on whole foods and you can improve those biofeedback symptoms through calories alone. And that means you're adding more nutritious foods. You're eating the same type of bro foods or simple foods, healthy whole foods that you had during the deficit and during the fat loss phase. You're just eating more of them. And what this allows us to do is avoid fat accumulation, avoid overeating. And it's not that those foods are fatty. It's just that those foods are more likely to be inaccurately tracked and cause more overeating or binging. So if we can avoid that, we're more likely to be able to control the diet, stick to the new reverse diet and actually sustain the goal we're after. And then later on in the diet, when you get to a point where your calories are much higher, you can fit those foods in because you're not going to be as triggered because you have more calories and you've restored a lot of these physiological matters that need to be restored that are the exact things that cause emotional eating and triggered binges. Just a little tip from a lot of my experience with reverse dieting. All right, guys, that is as much depth and detail as I could fit into a video on the comparison of a recovery diet and a reverse diet. Make sure if you have any questions, because I know a lot of people will drop them in the comments below. I love answering questions and I want to use them for future videos. So if you have anything you want covered, please leave me a comment. I will personally respond to you and potentially shoot a video in the future. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if it helped you, you will like all my other videos. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and get notified every time we drop a new video. I'll see you next time.